Perry Mack here in Bend, Oregon, and we're taking a look at some of the brand new 2020 Silverados, including, and I think it's just a 1500, the new 3 liter Duramax diesel. I've roped John Bart in here to give us a bit of a rundown on what we can expect. John, what do you do for Chevrolet? So, Perry, I work as the assistant chief engineer for the three liter Duramax in the, in the Silverado. Okay. And uh, work in the, our propulsion division. What can we expect, expect to get out of a, an engine like this? What's the longevity and for all the light duty engines, it, all of the engines in the light duty um, truck yeah. are targeted to be validated for useful full life, a minimum of 150,000 miles. That's, that's the, the target segment. Our competitors have, this, have similar numbers. Okay. Um, that means that it is absolutely going to make 150,000 doesn't mean that it won't make more than that, right. substantially more than that. Because some people, you know, it's a confusing sort of yeah. term. You say 150,000 miles, <laughs> they think that right. it's going to disintegrate and begin to biodegrade. No, not at all. So really the way to look at it is it absolutely should make 150,000 yeah. miles with no problem at all. Yeah. And then after that, um, there is going to be normal wear and you know, nothing lasts forever. Do you have uh, any kind of a projection, unofficial forecast of how we don't, long you expect an engine we to don't, last like this no, it's properly maintained? We really don't give a, a long-term forecast. Um, ideally, if, it, if you were had never had a problem with overheating due to you, you know lack of coolant or anything like that, yeah. it, it's it's going to last well beyond 150,000. But we don't we don't publish or, or offer a, okay. a, a target. Yeah, yeah. Because some of those old engines have gone. 300,000 miles or 400,000 miles. Right? Absolutely, yeah, and I fully expect that many will. Well, give me a rundown. What's special about the Duramax? Why'd you build this? The three liter Duramax has been specifically designed from a clean sheet for the Chevy Silverado. Um, we've started on this about five years ago in the development process to bring this to its point, and we're just on the verge of launching it in 2020. It'll be available. The Line 6 engine is an inherently balanced engine, which gives us great um, drivability, it gives us great NVH characteristics. Um, the entire purpose of the engine was to have a great fuel economy, was to have a great towing experience and have high refinement. John, when you say a, a high level of refinement, what does that mean? We've got a lot of um, enablers on here for us to meet emissions very well and still to be able to reap the benefits of the diesel combustion cycle. Great fuel economy, great low end torque, um, so as we go forward, I can explain some of these efficiency uh, features that we have on, yeah. the, on the engine. Love to hear about it. Yeah, so one of the things, if we think about how the air intake, um, to make it quiet, the, the, there's a large resonator, which is not shown here, but comes into the, into the turbo for, for quietness. The turbo itself is a VGT uh, actuated turbo, electrically actuated. Um, it, it is a roller bearing turbo, which is the first one at first for us that we've done. Uh, it can spin up to 175,000 RPM. Wow. From there, we go into quarter wave tuner and then into uh, water charge air cooler. This inner cooler allows us to cool the air, get more uh, air density and power density into the engine. Um, because it is water cooled, we can mount it very close up to the engine. And that enables us to have a very short column of air from the turbo to the cylinder so that when we boost, we don't have to compress very much air and we get that quick, right. fast acting boost. Right. So how does that manifest itself? We've got um, class leading 277 horsepower that happens at 3,750 RPMs, which is fairly high for a, tur for a diesel. Yeah. And then on the low side, we have 460 pound feet of torque. We get 95% of that at 1,250 RPMs and we get the peak at uh, 1500. So, so from there, uh, the charge air cooler goes down uh, to the intake manifold. In the intake manifold, we have another feature um, or another actuator in there. It's called the swirl valve. Each cylinder has two, two intake runners to go into the intake valves and we have a little valve on one of, the, one of the two. We're able to bias that valve in low flow conditions. That actually allows the air to come in and swirl and create more atomization and get better combustion. This rotary valve has the ability to control um, the flow to the, uh, the head or the block separately. We have a separate channel to go to the transmission oil cooler, okay. our own engine oil cooler, or a circuit into the cabin for cabin heat. Oh, so okay. we move 
the, uh, uh, we move the heat in the water where we need it, when we need it. When it's cold, we get it to the places that need to be warmed up quicker right. so that it gets, we get better efficiency. And when it's hot, we can, we can move that heat out. We have fuel injection. We have a class leading uh, high pressure pump, which is 2,500 bar, or we inject it 36,250 PSI. Um, it's very high pressure. We get better atomization and we get better combustion. So one of the additional things that we have on the exhaust system, we use both high pressure EGR and low pressure EGR. Both of these things work together to help uh, recirculate the exhaust gases for complete burning and for um, em emissions and for uh, fuel economy as well. Okay. So when, it's, when the engine's cold, the high pressure EGR will, um, will be used primarily to help heat up. When the engine heats up, we will use the low pressure EGR to, to, uh, to recirculate the engine gases. The reason for this is um, the high pressure EGR actually steals energy away from the turbo to spin because it's upstream of the turbo. Right. Once it's hot, we can use the low pressure EGR, which, is, which actually is downstream. So we actually use waste energy after that. So if we look here out of the turbo, we have a close coupled DOC, which is our diesel oxidation catalyst. Yep. Um, the, the key to this is getting this as warm as possible, as fast as possible. So by bringing it up closer, we lose, there's less heat lost out of the turbo yeah. and we're able to um, get it heated up quick. Okay. Um, from that we have our, our DPF and it's also combined with the SCR. So we call it the SCRF, for, meaning SCR and filter. So that's where the regeneration occurs for the particulates. So let's drop the acronyms for a moment. Or okay, a DPF is a diesel particulate filter. So that's the, the can that captures all of the soot. Yep. Um, we monitor how much soot is in there through pressure di difference in and out of the, uh, out of the DPF. Yep. And when it gets too full, we have, to, uh, we have to clean it out. And we do that through additional fuel. Oh, okay. So of those 10 pulses, when we have to do a regeneration, we, we do additional pulses after the combustion at the very end of the, of the stroke so that we get more fuel pushed down and we actually light off that brick and burn out the soot in there. Yeah, and just to be clear, this is a, the driver has nothing to do with this. This happens completely, all on Completely seamless. Okay. So the, the driver uh, should not and won't, won't hear it or even feel it. What well, the biggest thing they would notice if they were watching their fuel economy, instantaneous fuel economy, will drop during that. But right. the, they're short, eight to 10 minutes, and it happen about every four to 500 miles. From a maintenance point of view, the guy that's, that's owned gas engines all his life, mm -hmm. and he's looking at, especially the torque figure in here, you know, is there anything extra or what can he expect to have to do to take care of his new diesel engine? So you don't have to change the spark plugs, that's always a good thing. We don't really have any additional maintenance that's even required by okay. the customer. Yeah. Um, we, do have, uh, we do have a fuel filter, right, which, which may be uh, uh, additional. Yeah. Um, but other than that, we have diesel exhaust fluid, which you have to add. Yeah. Here's our DEF injector. Oh, the DEF tank is uh, 5.1 gallons. Yeah. Uh, it's targeted to go to a normal oil, oil change. So our max oil uh, interval would be 7,500 miles. That would be yeah. with normal driving. Obviously with uh, towing, that will do two things. One, it'll, it'll um, shorten your oil interval because we have oil life monitoring. Yeah. And then the other is your DEF will be used up quicker. So if you're towing heavy, heavy um, you're producing more NOx, uh, we have to inject more. Uh, so that may be you know, as short yeah. as uh, 3,000, maybe 4,000 miles, so. What do you see as sort of the sweet spot for a towing capacity or, or towing weight on this? Yeah, so it's got a lot of torque and it, and yeah. it, and it could tow uh, a ton of weight, but because of, the, because of the packaging and the airflow, the, we, we have to make sure that we don't uh, overtaxing from a temperature perspective, some of the components around the exhaust, we, we are targeting 9,300 pounds. Now, that covers 90% of all yeah. Silverado buyers. So we think we've got a great package that's gonna get outstanding fuel economy for the vast majority of our light duty towers. Yeah. What's the change or where does the guy decide to go to the diesel from gas? Like, where's the, what's the deciding factor for that buyer? Well, so two things, I would say if he, uh, he's got to drive it and, and he's got to 
he's got to compare. Does he like the, the drivability of this? Yeah. I personally love the way this drives. Um, the torque is right there and there's hardly any turbo lag whatsoever. So you're, even your daily driving around yeah. town, it's, you get all that power without the engine having to over rev or you know, yeah. anything like that, you, you scoot right along. And they have to look at what, what they're looking at from a, a towing perspective. Um, that same type of instant power at the low end is gonna help you launch and, yeah. and get on the on-ramp. And then the fuel economy factor is there. So if they're somebody who's does a considerable amount of towing yeah. and they like they want some refinement under hood and they want to do it with ease, yeah. um, there's definitely a payback period there depending on how they tow and if they're um, so I think there's a very compelling reason yeah. for someone to want to buy this engine. Yeah. And, this engine. and one other thing about why somebody would want to would want to get this, okay, first of all it's it's available on the, the LT, the RST, the LTZ and the High Country. So it's across a broad range. Right. From it's if you have already a 5.3 liter, because maybe you have the high country, it's the yep. base engine, this upcharge is only $2,495. So just under $2,500. Yep. And it's the same cost as if you were to upgrade to a 6.2 liter gas, um, but you will get considerable better fuel economy with right. this. John, thanks very much, yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Till next time, stay safe, and we'll see you on the trails.